Today we'll talk about sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is a multi-system disease of unknown etiology characterized by epithelioid granulomas without caseation and different organs. So here is a disease which has granulomas, mostly epithelioid granulomas, wherein we don't find any caseation in the center and these granulomas are present in different organs. In the skin also these granulomas are present. Mediastinal and peripheral lymph node enlargement is seen, lungs, eyes, skin, liver and spleen are involved here and there is non-caseating naked granulomas present here, naked meaning there is no peripheral mantle of lymphocytes present here. It is also called as Mortimer's malady since it was identified in Mrs. Mortimer and the cutaneous sarcoidosis was first reported by Rajam et al. Epidemiology it is seen in 10 to 40 burlap population. Afro-Caribbeans are mostly susceptible. Women have CNS and eye manifestations, whereas men have abnormal calcium metabolism. Etiology, uh, it is said that an extrinsic antigen will trigger dysregulated type 1 helper cell T cell response, leading to the formation of non-caseating granulomas of macrophages and epithelioid cells, which are encircled by very faint, very few number of lymphocytes. Also, it is said that Mycobacterium tuberculosis catalase peroxidase protein. This protein will trigger the formation of the this protein functions as an antigen. It will trigger the formation of the granulomas. Also, it is said that the World Trade Center disaster dust is known to trigger or act as an antigen in causing sarcoidal granulomas. There are certain HLA subtypes which are associated. These are HLA DRB1 03, 11, 12, 14, and 15. Out of which this HLA DRB1 03 is important for us. Also, familial cases have been noted. Other immunological aspects of sarcoidosis are it is a helper T cell mediated response. There is suppression of cell mediated immunity here. So there will be energy to tuberculin test and candidal antigen test. There will be energy. There is no immunological response seen. And increased level of circulating suppressor T cells are found. Increased immunoglobulins with immune complexes are found. There is alteration in Th1, Th2 balance. Raised calcium levels and positive cream test is seen here. Histopathology, mostly we have to look for sarcoidal granulomas here. These are the sarcoidal granulomas which are non-caseating naked granulomas. So, well-circumscribed epithelioid cell naked granulomas with or no, with little or no caseation is found here. There are inclusion bodies in here like shaman bodies or conchoid bodies, asteroid bodies or stellate bodies and residual bodies. The shaman or conchoid bodies are concentric bodies. They are around 100 micrometer in diameter. They have calcium, iron and birefringent crystals being present. We also have sterate or asteroid bodies which measures around 10 micrometer. They have a central core of collagen which is arranged in a radiating fashion. We also have residual bodies and residual bodies have lipomucoproteins. And also polarizable foreign bodies are seen in the histology. These are nothing but the foreign bodies which trigger the granuloma formation. Like we have calcium, we have aluminium, we have silicon, we have phosphorus which will trigger the formation of granulomas. Those also can be seen. And immunohistochemistry it is positive for GLE-1 here. So here in the histopathology, we can see the granulomas being present in the dermis. They can involve the subcutaneous tissue and they can be seen around the adnexal and the perivascular areas also. Now coming to the clinical manifestations, uh, varied clinical manifestations are seen here. Uh, it can be either cutaneous or extracutaneous. General symptoms like lethargy, loss of weight, general malaise are seen. So the general symptoms will be lethargy, loss of weight, general malaise. Cutaneous we have and extracutaneous we have. Extracutaneous respiratory, reticular endothelial system, eyes, UVO parotid fever, nervous and endocrine system, skeletal system, cardiovascular system, genito urinary system can be involved. We will see one by one of these cutaneous features. So cutaneous disease is present in 20 to 40 percent of the patients will have cutaneous disease. These are they, they can be either specific cutaneous disease or they can be non-specific. These specific lesions are more chronic and they are less favorable outcome. Whereas these non-specific lesions are more acute and have benign course. Lesions can be anything. They can be papules, nodules, plaques. They can be any type of lesion seen. And the color will be yellow ochre to a livid violaceous hue. On dioscopy, this is important, pale yellowish gray color is seen on dioscopy. Firstly, coming to the maculopapular variant. Here it is transient, pruritic and it's a maculopapular rash. Slightly scaly it can be and lightly infiltrated like in rosacea. Another form is a papular form which is painless. Erythematous hemispherical papules will be there like this and they will be around 1 to 5 mm. Face and extensors of the limbs are involved. They heal with yellow telangiectetic scar. So these are the hemispherical erythematous papules, 1 to 5 millimeter individual papules. They join together to form a plaque. This is on the face you can see on the nose and on the eyebrows. 
Next we have the plaque form here which is irregularly infiltrated plaque. It can be either annular or serpiginous bilaterally symmetrical limbs but a phase are involved. Next we have the nodular form which is single of you, soft firm, round erythematous nodules with dilated vessels they have. And they also these nodules have a central depression and they heal with a telangiectetic scar. We have erythema nodosum. Erythema nodosum is uh, tender nodules which is seen on the extremities of middle aged. Uh, DD of, uh, of erythema nodosum in India would be TB and leprosy. So we have to rule out TB and leprosy before considering it as sarcoidosis. This angiolupoid form here you see one or two soft hemispherical reddish brown lesions. These lesions are characteristically seen on the side of the bridge of the nose or below the inner edge of the eyebrows or adjacent area of the cheek. So mostly this angiolupoid form will be present on the face. Females mostly are important here. They are involved here and spontaneous resolution of these lesions are seen. If annular form, annular form will be central clearing with raised margins will be present. It uh, represents a chronic stage mostly on the forehead we see. So this is the annular form here. We have lupus pernia which is an important lesion of sarcoidosis here. Bluish red to dusky violaceous infiltrated doughy nodules and plaques are seen. Symmetrically on the nose, cheeks, ears, fingers and hands and toes you can see. And uh, if the ear is involved it will be massively enlarged and that is called turkey ears here. And uh, if the scalp is involved, it will cause scarring alopecia, nasal involvement can be seen. Others like you are the upper respiratory tract infection, bone cyst, lacrimal gland, hypercalcemia can be seen. So this is the lupus pernio of the nose here, the cartilage is involved in this part. We have subcutaneous sarcoidosis which is asymptomatic to slightly tender uh, lesions would be present. Uh, upper extremities are mostly involved and uh, if suppose me there is presence of panicular non-infectious sarcoidal epithelial granuloma that is if there is presence of granuloma in or epithelial cells inside the subcutaneous tissue with minimal lymphocytic infiltrate that will confirm the diagnosis of sarcoidosis for us. So that has to be kept in mind while diagnosing a case now. Scar sarcoidosis. The scars can develop sarcoidosis. Long standing scars mostly they become inflamed and infiltrated. Typical reddish lesions uh, that turn brown as they fade are seen. Unusual forms like alopecic, atrophic, erythrodermic, lichenoid, ichthyosiform, psoriasiform, keratotic forms of sarcoidosis are seen. Nail involvement. Nail involvement. Nails become rough. They have they show pitting, longitudinal ridging, fragility, cracking, opacity, and total loss of nail plate sometimes. So all of these nail changes also can be seen in sarcoidosis. Mucosa. Tongue and buccal mucosa are involved with yellowish diffuse plaques will be seen. Ulcers can be seen, and uh, cartilage collapse of the nose can also be seen. Coming to the extracutaneous disease, uh, pulmonary involvement, if the lungs are involved, uh, lung fibrosis are seen and parenchymal involvement mostly happens. The reticuloendothelial system here, hilar and paratrical lymph nodal enlargement, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, hypersplenism. Because of hypersplenism, there will be thrombocytopenia seen. So these are the reticuloendothelial system manifestations. Then we have eyes. Eyes can show uveitis and conjunctivitis and that's why uh, regular slit skin examination of the eye has to be done. Upper respiratory tract, we have uh, nasal obstruction, cough, dyspnea. Uveoparotid fever is seen here. That is characterized by fever, facial palsy, uveitis, parotid gland swelling. So this constitutes uveoparotid fever. That is seen. CNS, we see peripheral and cranial neuropathy, mononeuritis multiplex and space occupying lesions can be seen. Endocrine system, diabetes insipidus and hypopituitarism is seen. Skeletal system, small bones of the hands and feet are involved. Bone cysts can be seen. Genitourinary system and nephrocalcinosis can be seen and because of hypercalciuria and hypercalcemia. Then the sarcoidal granulomas can be deposited in the kidney. So those are the kidney manifestations. CVS it can present with arrhythmias, conduction defects, palpitation, chest pain and syncope. In children if uh, older children are involved the presentation is that like adults. If less than 4 year children are involved they have rash, uveitis and arthritis. Those are the symptoms seen. Coming to the investigations to diagnose sarcoidosis, investigations like complete hemogram with ESR, tissue biopsy of the lesion, 
tuberculin test which shows energy there will be no reaction that shows energy that is seen in uh, sarcoidosis chest x ray for lung involvement hand x ray for small hands uh, small bones of hands and feet involvement ecg to see cardiac involvement pulmonary function test bronchoalveolar lavage serum levels of ac the sarcoidal granulomas release angiotensin angiotensin converting enzyme so these levels will be raised that has to be noted serum calcium levels also will be raised that has to be noted beam test has to be uh, done radioactive gallium 67 uptake for pulmonary lesions pet scanning and other scannings like hydroxyproline serum level of soluble intercellular addition molecule 1 chitotriosidase levels are seen those all of them all these are done to check the disease activity beam test is it's an intradermal test we intradermally inject 0.1 to 0.2 ml of the sarcoidal tissue into the forearm in 2 to 3 weeks purplish nodule is seen in 4 to 6 weeks sarcoidal granuloma can be seen so this test uh, positivity will tell us the patient is suffering from sarcoidosis but as the disease becomes chronic uh, it loses the importance we have angiotensin converting enzyme and these levels are increased in 60% of the patients this is released by the sarcoidal granulomas helps in monitoring of the disease activity Diagnosis is mostly by the clinical features, histology, and investigations that we spoke before. Differential diagnosis for histopathology would be lupus vulgaris, leprosy, lymphoma, foreign body granuloma. Treatment for mild disease we can go for topical intralesional steroids and topical triclorimus. Uh, rapidly progressive disease, generalized disease, non-responsive lesions we can go for systemic steroids. for refractory lesions we can go for steroids along with steroid sparing agents and topical steroids also for fibrotic sarcoid lupus perneo bone cyst and pulmonary involvement corticosteroid sparing agents like methotrexate azathioprine mycophilin mofetil is given severe neurological disease this will require intravenous pulse therapy using methylprednisolone 1 g per week for 8 weeks it's given okay so that um, can be tried then for the severely disfiguring lesions they require reconstructive surgery so excision and flap closure Other drugs which are used in sarcoidosis are allopurinol 300 mg per day, oral isotretinoin 1 mg per kg per day, pentoxifilin, melatonin, tetracycline, hydroxychloroquine, fumaric acid esters, etanercept, infliximab, adalimumab, PUA, UBA1 phototherapy, photodynamic therapy, pulse dye, and CO2 lasers. All of these also can be tried. This is about sarcoidosis. Other granulomas, other than sarcoidal granulomas, are we have palisading granulomas like that seen in necrobiosis, lipoidica. and we have tuberculosis granulomas with caseation necrosis foreign body granulomas caused by certain triggers by the foreign bodies and separate granulomas seen in certain infections